Committee, I would like to welcome you to tonight's interfaith service. Would you please stand as Pastor Keith from the Living Hope Church leads us in the invocation. Good evening, let's pray. Lord, we come to you in Jesus' name. We're just grateful and thankful for the free country that we live in, Lord. God, thank you for the spirit of courage that's been handed down to us by the men and women that have gone before us, Lord. We pray, God, that we'd be worthy representatives of that courage, Lord, that we would not put up with tyranny in our own lives and our community and justice. Lord, we know anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere, Lord. Father, we thank you that we can exercise that gift of free choice that you've given us, Lord, and that we can use it in our community. We pray your blessing, God, not only on this event tonight, Lord, but on the whole proceedings that happen during the next several weeks, Lord, as we celebrate these national days of civil disobedience that we call July the 4th, where brave men pledge their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor. God, stir that up in this community, Lord. Put Latrobe, Lord, on your blessing map, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. God, we pray for the natural things we need to, Lord, jobs for our children or our grandchildren to be able to stay in the area. We thank you this weekend was a great success without harm to person or property, Lord. Thank you, Father. Remind us even tonight in a deeper way the great heritage we've been given, Lord, and cause us, Lord, to use our time and our days wisely. In Jesus' name, amen. Please remain standing as we proudly present the colors by the American Legion. We will pledge the allegiance left by our Latro Chief of Police, James Bumar, and sing our national anthem. As the colors are coming forward, we have Abby Hall and Karen Kern, who will play America the Beautiful.
introductions that we would like to make tonight. Unfortunately, Carol Greenwald, who normally makes these introductions, is out of town tonight for a wedding. When you see her, please give her a thank you for her dedication and hard work to make the 4th of July celebration special. First, we would like to recognize our 2011 Queen, Nicole McCleary, and thank her for being here tonight. Nicole. I don't know whether you noticed the front of your program, but we had eight students from the Greater Lake Group School District who did the drawings, and these students had the drawings. They were chosen out of about 300. I do not know if any of them happen to be able to make it tonight, but I would like uh, to recognize them for their fine artwork. Are any of them available tonight? And if so, would you please stand? I think we can be proud of our kids and what they are able to do. And now, the 4th of July Community Choir will sing United by the Red, White, and Blue. The words of this song remind us that America is made up of many different cultures, but we are all American, one and all.
many of you pronounce it lay tro Yeah. Some of you vote twice. Um, quick story, I used to live in Philadelphia for a little bit, and they used to call it water. And I thought they were all crazy. I knew it was water, and uh, I never converted to calling it water. Um, and then I left, went to college, and moved here. And then I heard people calling it lay tro and I thought they were all crazy too. Because it looks like a lot to me, but actually, um, it is late trove, I believe. Um, so hopefully tonight that can end. The, uh, the founder uh, was French, okay? So when I look this up, it's like L-E-I, like le. So um, Oliver Barnes was the founder. Uh, and he was a civil engineer in the uh, Pennsylvania Railroad. Um, and he would map out plans to what would become our great city in uh, 1854. Now, he had to call it something, and he had a best friend and college roommate who was also a civil engineer, um, and his name was Benjamin Latro. So uh, that's what he named it after. Now, his roommate's father has a neat story. Um, he was essential in rebuilding the Capitol, of course, in Washington, D.C., uh, after the War of 1812. So right off the bat, our founders dreamt big and achieved big things. Um, and that certainly didn't end there. Uh, and I also want to take a quick note about our African um, or Native American brothers and sisters who used to use the law of Hannah uh, even before Benjamin got here for their livelihood. Uh, it's kind of a neat thing to think. The law of Hannah used to go up and down on their canoes, even though they weren't permanently settled here. Uh, also, um, that, back, that great background doesn't end there. As many of you know, Boniface Wimmer came here uh, from Germany. Uh, he was looking for a livelihood for his brothers at the time, and he built on a small piece of farmland what is now the oldest and largest Benedictine monastery in the United States of America. Um, so he was basically serving the Catholic immigrants, um, but that exclusivity opened up to include the Irish, um, African American, Native Americans, us Italians, and uh, people from all over Eastern Europe. Um, so from brewing beer, and yes, the monks did brew beer, uh, to making bread, which they still do, uh, they had a work ethic that I think is good for, you know, all of us here is ora et labora, which is work and prayer. And that's sort of the backdrop of what I think a lot of us here might do within our professions uh, and with our common uh, ecumenical gathering here. Um, <clears throat> so, Wimmer was, was also an entrepreneur in some sense. So, speaking of entrepreneurship, how many of you think that we have the first banana split uh, right here, that our friends in Ohio, who are making the same claim, I have it all wrong. Show of hands. Okay. Yeah, you're all right. That that's actually verifiable. We correct. 1904, Dave Strickler, uh, uh, from Strickler's, invented and sold the first banana split right at Lee Street. Street. Um, and the year before that, 1903, our historical railroad um, was opened and was docked by some of those loading the train that may have left for the um, other parts of the world or for the war, which is now known as the Salvo Station, which is a historical, historical place. Others who may have used this railroad uh, were possibly the first professional football players. Um, and I learned that the first professional salary was $10 <laughs> for the whole season. Uh, times have changed. So um, there's so many other things that are amazing about this place why my wife and family and I choose to live here. Um, Fred Rogers, you know, his advances in early learning have radically altered the education field. Um, the uh, Arnold Palmer, who has helped put us on the national map, the Steelers and uh, us welcoming arms to them. Um, it's just a really great place, <clears throat> excuse me. So in closing, um, I defer all your questions to our keynote speaker, who's a historical expert. Um, and I just want to thank you all for writing the history here. Um, young people like myself, and even younger, who are going to come up here in a couple minutes, I think it's awesome that they're going to take the stage and share their poetry. But um, thank you so much for all you guys do for the city and um, this place that we call home, Latro. Thank you. because they, when they sing the alma mater, they sing dear old lay trove high. And so those who raised your hand, I'm sure it's because you probably graduated from here. At the end of the school year, 
the sixth grade students in my trove were asked to write an essay or a poem on what they believe makes their town, Latrobe, someplace special. Tonight we have five students who will share their essays with us. And at this time I ask them to please come to the stage. Aaron Falk, 
Foster, and this is my poem about Latrobe. I think Latrobe is a special place, it is very fun. Whether it's snowing or leaves are falling, or when we're in the sun. No matter what happens, it's still a great place, and usually you can always see a friendly, familiar face. Anywhere you go, you will be delighted, because anything you see or do will make you quite excited. Football games and other sports, you can watch in awe, then you can remember and discuss the amazing plays you saw. Latrobe is great, as you can see, Latrobe is a cool place, especially for me. When you think of happy, where do you think of? When you feel joyful, where are you? When you hear laughter, where does it come from? There's only one place I think of, the place where the best banana splits are, where all of Parma comes from, where football is always in season. Lake Trove, someplace special. I believe these students will help to continue to make Lake Trove someplace special. We are truly thankful for this community choir led by Pat and accompanied by Susanna. Pat has expanded this choir and many of these members sing at different events throughout Lake Trobe. They bring such joy to those that they perform for. And now they will sing, Sing America Sing. I am an American. Let my song be a song of freedom. Let the melody sound the call of liberty. Let the rhythm beat the drum of justice. Let the words be a testament of our gratitude that proudly declares, I am an American. Sing, America, sing.
those who have proudly served our country. Pastor Bobby will help us remember these people. We would like to recognize also all of the veterans who are present this evening and those who are in active military service at this time. Would you please stand to be recognized?
Each of us can do our part to make this country a better place. If we would sing one song, a song of love, a song of peace, can you imagine what that would do? Please listen to our community choir as they sing the song, one song.
Upon graduation, she came back to Lake Trobe and taught English in the Greater Lake Trobe Junior High for 37 years. She started volunteering for the Lake Trobe Historical Society and has been secretary, vice president, and now president. She lives in Lawson Heights with her husband, Jack, and their son, who is a recent college graduate. We are proud to bring to you Mary Lou Thompson. I have to tell you before I get started, Jared discussed the uh, pronunciation of our town with me when we first came in, and I guess I am one of those few who pronounce it Latrobe, even though I graduated from Latrobe High School. <laughs> but you heard from the introduction that I am president of the Historical Society, so it should come as no great surprise that I'm a pack rat. I saved everything. I saved every high post from all four years as a student in this building when this was still the high school. I saved pictures and programs from every synchronized swimming show that I helped to direct down at Rogers McFeely Pool back in the 1960s. I saved all kinds of memorabilia from my years of, of teaching and so on. You kind of get the picture. One weekend earlier this spring, I was cleaning up my attic and decided it was time to move some of this collected ephemera to the files of the Historical Society. And I came across a folder that I had forgotten all about. As I said, I save everything. This folder was full of essays that I had written when I was in high school and college, some going back 50 years. One of them was an essay entitled, What Promises the Latrobe Area Holds for Its Graduates. That was the title of the American Legion's annual essay contest my senior year in high school. I couldn't resist reading what I had written and comparing my impressions as a 16-year-old with what I've come to know after 50 more years of living in this town. My conclusions might surprise some of the local critics who like to complain loud and long that Latrobe has nothing to offer anymore. I definitely disagree. There must have been some kind of destiny that made me find that paper at that time because it was just a few days later that Donna came to me and asked me to speak to you tonight on the topic, Latrobe, Someplace Special. A couple of weeks before, I had already been starting to collect thoughts on that after reviewing that high school paper. So, what does make Latrobe special? You've already heard, far better than I could explain, some of the, the famous firsts. And it is fun to be able to claim bragging rights. Recently, two sisters from Ohio visited our historical society. They'd never been to Latrobe. They were here to do some family research. Their grandparents or great-grandparents, whatever, had moved from Latrobe to Ohio back in the 1920s. And as they looked around our headquarters, they saw Arnie's Corner and pictures of Mr. Rogers. They saw the mail bag for the first non-stop air mail pickup. They saw pictures of that first professional football team and learned that Latrobe is recognized as the home of the banana split. They were amazed that a community as small as ours had so many claims to fame. And I have to admit, we were proud to kind of show off a little bit. We should be proud of our community's history. But those aren't the only things that make Latrobe someplace special. For the last seven years, I've been the editor of the Historical Society's quarterly newsletter, the Latrobe Historical Gazette. As I've researched various topics for the feature articles in the Gazette, I've come to know other individuals and organizations who may not have earned national recognition, but who have truly helped make Latrobe someplace special. Two endeavors stand out in my mind as examples of what community really means. 
The very first article I wrote for the Gazette was about our public library. Back in the 1920s, a few individuals saw a need and formed a library association. They went door to door soliciting pennies, dimes, whatever money people were willing to give just to get this enterprise started. Then the Civic Club got involved and organized a drive for used books. Soon local businesses and citizens purchased new books to add to the collection. The first public library in Latrobe opened in 1927 in one room of the Masonic building. Some of you may remember it. It was so crowded, there was barely enough room to walk between the bookshelves and the circulation desk, but Latrobe had a library. It eventually acquired another room on another floor, but space became an increasing problem over the next couple of decades. Then in the 1940s, George H. Adams, a member of the library's board, left money in his will to build a new library for the town that he loved. Adams Memorial Library opened in 1955 and still stands as a tribute not only to Mr. Adams, but also to the efforts of countless individuals and groups who made a dream a reality and have kept his vision alive. Legion Keener Park has a similar story, documented by photos in our historical society files. We have pictures of the area about the time the land was donated by the Keener family. After a rain, parts became a swamp, earning the nickname of Frogtown. We also have pictures of members of the American Legion hauling truckloads of fill donated by the adjacent American Locomotive Company. We have pictures of a group of men who volunteered their evenings to help install a hard surface court at the Irving Avenue playground. In the 1950s, citizens of Latrobe approved a bond issue to construct Memorial Stadium as a living tribute to those who served their country in time of war. There are pictures of the construction of a first class Little League field, a project undertaken by the Latrobe JCs in the mid 1950s. Finally, there are the pictures of the 1959 dedication of the swimming pool, a gift from the Rogers and McFeely's families. This truly was a community project. Latrobe's history contains many such examples of people stepping up to contribute whatever was within their ability to give to make our community better. But the fact is, I would not care so much about Latrobe's past if I didn't think it had a future. Because my husband and I are both involved in a number of community organizations, we've had the opportunity to witness firsthand some of the great things that are still happening in our community. Three years ago, the Historical Society partnered with the Community Revitalization Program to organize a walking tour of the historic churches in downtown Latrobe. At each church, the pastor or a member of the congregation spoke to our group. I can't tell you how impressed I was by the pride and passion with which, with, with which each spoke, not only about their church's history, but also about their ongoing youth activities and outreach programs and so on. God is alive and well in Latrobe, and we are indeed fortunate to have so many denominations to carry on his work in our community. Last fall, I represented the Historical Society at the dedication of the new St. Vincent Hall Center on Jefferson Street. The buildings that had stood on that site for over a century were the Fulman Manufacturing Building, which actually began as a skating rink, and the original trolley barn, which for years had been hidden behind Gentleman Jim's car wash. I listened to the various speakers with conflicting emotions. As a historian, I do hate to see the old buildings being torn down. But I had also recently toured those buildings, 
and seen the deterioration both inside and out. And I had to ask myself, which is the greater asset to our community? Buildings whose only value is their age? Buildings which have become an eyesore and even a safety hazard? Or an attractive new structure in which dedicated volunteers can better serve their neighbors? For me, the answer was easy. This spring, I celebrated Earth Day at Rotary Park near Youngstown with my husband, a member of, member of the Rotary Club of Latrobe. The park itself is an example of the good things that can happen when community groups work together. It began in 1996 when the Rotary Club approached the school district and offered to make improvements to the soccer and softball field adjacent to the high school. With broad-based community support over the last 16 years, the club has completed one regulation soccer field, two softball fields, a pavilion, and restroom facilities. Currently under construction is a second pavilion designed specifically as an outdoor classroom. The high school's capstone environmental science class is already using the park as a hands-on learning experience. Over the last several years, with financial backing of Rotary and others, they've installed log structures along the creek bank that have greatly reduced flooding and bank erosion and improved the fish habitat. They regularly test the water and document the number and variety of fish that do now inhabit the Nine Mile Run. For the last three years, the Rotary Club has partnered with the three elementary schools and the capstone students to plan Earth Day activities for the local kindergartners. Each school's kindergarten plants a tree at Rotary Park with the help of the high school students. If you really want to experience something special, you should see the faces on those little ones as they cheer for each shovel full of dirt that, gives, that goes on their tree. The excitement is contagious. I mentioned earlier that I'm a retired teacher and I'm very proud of our local schools and the opportunities they offer. We're fortunate to have St. Vincent College and a branch of Westmoreland County Community College nearby. The school district has cooperated with these schools to provide students the opportunity to earn college credits while still in high school. Recently, I had an opportunity to hear a representative of Kennemel discuss their, their new Young Engineers program. Twice a week for 15 weeks, students from Latrobe High School leave school to experience a combination of hands-on projects, discussions, mentoring from Kennemel's engineers, and field trips to give them a real view of career opportunities in engineering and manufacturing. When I wrote as a high school student about the advantages our community offers its students, I could not have dreamed of having opportunities like this. There are many other community efforts that I could speak of tonight, but I promise to keep this short. In the last weeks before I graduated from Latrobe High School, one of my teachers gave us some words of wisdom to take with us. It's the first time I can remember seeing the serenity prayer. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Latrobe is not utopia. There are some things we can't control as the world changes around us. It's easy to sit back and criticize, throw up our hands, do nothing. But I thank God the Latrobe area has been blessed throughout its history with individuals and organizations, foundations and corporations who have had the courage and the perseverance and the concern for our community to give of their time and talents and resources to make this a better place for us to call home. Some were huge endeavors, others on a smaller scale, but all have made a difference. I concluded that high school essay 50 years ago by pointing out that Latrobe's greatest resource is its people. I still believe that today. 
I'm sure there are many of you sitting out there who have offered your time or money or expertise in ways that I may not even be aware of. But you know who you are, and I thank you. You are what makes La Trobe truly someplace special. You can never say no to Donna, so it doesn't matter if you're in your bed, she's dragging you. <laughs> uh, uh, I also graduated from La Trobe, and uh, Mary brought back a lot, of a lot of nice, fine memories. I taught, I graduated from this building. How many people graduated from this building? A bunch of old people. <laughs> well, I'm not. Uh, yeah, it was, well, 50 years for me this year. A couple people in the car graduated with me. Well, I see three. George, Dillis, Stong, anybody else? That was a good year, 62. Uh, but, uh, so I spent almost about half my life in this building. And uh, I taught here, taught sixth grade here with Donna. And it was a pleasure working with Donna. So whatever she asked you to do, you just do it because she does so much more than anybody else. So. Yeah. And also, I, I don't want to forget to thank Mary for all her 30 years. <laughs> Donna will make it. You'll make 30. <laughs> all right, if you have your, you need your programs, please.
not going to believe it. Somebody burned part of the Latrobe playland. And so I became concerned and I called Jeannie Ashley and I said to Jeannie, um, what part was burned? I said, did you remember that there was a time capsule that was built and placed underneath the playland? And she said, no. How deep was it? And I said, well, it had to be below the frost line, so it has to be at least three feet down. And so she asked me, she said, do you know where it is? And I said, yes, I have a map that shows that and also gave a map to the Brewer so that they would have, because the idea was in 40 years that this playland would lay there and be there for 40 years. And at that time, the, tap, the time capsule would be raised. So when I came home, I went through a box that I had that had things in it from the time capsule. I Xeroxed off all the letters that people wrote to have placed in the time capsule. And there were many of them. There were people from the council and the mayor. There was uh, the president. There was Bill Mazeroski, of course, Arnold Palmer and Fred Rogers. But there was a note in there that on the Sunday that we were building the community playland, that Reverend Fred Obolinski, who was at that time the former pastor of the Trinity Lutheran Church, he came that Sunday morning and he did a service for us down at the playland. And in part of his service, I believe, says it all as far as our community. And this is what he wrote. There is no doubt that some see community as a hassle, an intrusion into private life. To be in community means to be responsible to others, whether you like it or not, pay taxes, to follow certain rules, and to put up with neighborhood spats. There can certainly be hassle side, there certainly can be hassle sides of things. And I guess we all have had our share. But the Lake Trail Community Playland has made wonderfully clear what incredible blessing and joy can come in a community. To be in community means to live in communion with one another, sharing oneness and purpose and vision. It means doing something for someone else for the sheer joy that such self-giving brings. I believe that says it all. Oh, this community, you the people of the community, as Mary Lou said, are what makes Lake Trobe special. There are few communities that can truly say that. Thank you for coming tonight. Thank you for supporting this service. Thank you for helping us to show this town and our nation that religious freedom is important to us and our community. This service was started clear back in 1976 and has continued since that time. Thank you for making Lake Trobe someplace special. Now please stand as we retire the colors and Charles Person, chaplain of the American Legion, pronounces the benediction. And then please join with us in the singing, let there be peace on earth and may it begin with each one of us.
God bless us and keep us. Into his gracious protection we commit ourselves. May he be near us to defend us, with us to refresh us, around us to preserve us, before us to guide us, behind us to justify us, and above all, bless us and keep us from all evil. Amen.